So for the first time in 25 years, we have an undisputed heavyweight champion, and it's Oleksandr Usyk. He beats Tyson Fury with a 12-round split decision. What a fantastic fight this was. It was so engaging, so much, so much to watch, so much to see. There was skill, there was technique, there was heart, there was drama. There's a knockdown. The only thing we were missing was a, a stoppage, but definitely so engaging, so absorbing, so much to, to take in and obviously a monumental event. Um, excuse me, my voice is quite hoarse right now, as you can imagine, you know, a night of boxing, screaming at the telly. Um, so I am a little bit quiet because my voice is very tender right now. But yeah, fantastic fight. If you haven't seen it, what are you doing? Go and watch this fight. Um, yeah, it was a very closely contested fight. Uh, I've got to hold my hands up. It was closer than I thought it would be. I was saying in the lead up that I thought Oleksandr Usyk would win convincingly. Um, I certainly agree with the decision. I thought he did win. However, if it had been ruled a draw, I certainly wouldn't have an issue because Tyson Fury had plenty of success in this fight. He, I feel Tyson Fury lost the first three rounds, although maybe the second, I felt like it could have been ruled even maybe a Fury round. But I thought Oleksandr Usyk came out and... Yeah, displayed his skill, displayed his poise, his coordination. Because Tyson Fury was, of course, very sharp. But just that, uh, the eyes, the mobility, the reflexes of Oleksandr Usyk and the speed. He was, I think, within the first uh, five seconds, he'd landed a flush jab to the body. And that was a theme of everybody talking about Oleksandr Usyk being vulnerable to the body. And Tyson Fury did. I don't want to say that he exploited that because... Nobody really likes body shots. Not really. You know, you don't want to get hit there. But yeah, Oleksandr Usyk, um, that is one place where he's vulnerable because it's a, a target that you can get. And Tyson Fury had plenty of success, particularly in the mid-rounds. But uh, Oleksandr Usyk himself, he was uh, investing into the body. Plenty of jabs, plenty of flush, straight lefts. And they were punches that you couldn't ignore. Sometimes body shots, they can be difficult to score. But these were really sinking in to Tyson Fury and credit to him you know a big gut of his he uh, he took those punches fairly well but it just showed that Oleksandr Usyk would be able to get to Tyson Fury at least early on with some relative ease uh, particularly as Tyson Fury was moving that was something I pointed out in the pre-fight video Tyson Fury does attempt to use his height and particularly his length he'll he'll leave an arm out there he'll attempt to stiff arm and then move laterally and you can time him like that. Otto Valin did it. Plenty of other fighters have done it before in the past. And Oleksandr Usyk, just as many of us suspected, was able to do that. However, Tyson Fury did get into his own groove. I want to say around round four, these kind of early mid rounds, Tyson Fury really got into a rhythm. And he wasn't particularly aggressive he was actually moving around quite a bit and it was difficult for Oleksandr Usyk to pin him down. And yeah, Tyson Fury was doing what Tyson Fury does. There was plenty of showboating and that was very strategic from Tyson Fury. And I've got to give a shout out to Hatman because he was one of the few people who I saw uh, bring this up in the lead up to this fight saying that when Tyson Fury is maybe not wanting to engage and he wants to shave off a bit of time and maybe still steal the round, He'll do some showboating, and that's what we saw Tyson Fury do. Back himself into the corner, you know, put his arms on the rope, shake his head, stick his tongue out, all that kind of stuff. Fury being the showman he is, naturally, but also very strategic pacing of the round, trying to leave that lasting impression in the judge's mind. However, Usyk was having a good deal of success when Tyson Fury did back himself into the corner. Usyk had... Um, uh, that left hand, he was firing it, and it wasn't always landed, but sometimes it was, and it was knocking Tyson Fury's head back, knocking the spray into the crowd. However, Tyson Fury was taking these punches, and he was warming into the fight, and he started investing in his own body work on Oleksandr Usyk, and it did seriously slow Usyk down, and it was really the first time I can remember in Usyk's career where he looked vulnerable, like seriously vulnerable, like he might have been there for the taking, because all of a sudden... The footwork was just leaving him. Usyk becoming a bit of a plodder, which, you know, that's um, that's quite concerning because he's someone who relies on his feet quite a lot. But Tyson Fury doing very well, being uh, quite elusive. Uh, time and Usyk coming in. And 
you know, using his posturing, his fainting, his showboating to really look like he was getting a foothold in the fight. However, I noticed that after those mid rounds, Tyson Fury, he seemed to slow down a little bit. And they were good rounds that he got himself. Those were rounds in the bank. And I think a, a small cut on Usyk's right eyebrow actually opened up. But credit to his team because they managed that cut really well. Like you could see the cut was open. There was no blood dripping from it. So I don't know how they managed it so well. But Tyson Fury just seemed to fall into a pattern of basically investing his energy into the first minute of a round and then going into a kind of a slower pace where he's then trying to use his showboating, use his fainting to just unsettle Usyk enough. And it was almost like he was using that first minute of a round to see if he could land something to keep Usyk off so then he could coast for the next two minutes. But I feel like Usyk kind of figured that out and he um, he was trying to give back to Fury in that, say, that first one-minute interval. And what we started to see was Usyk get his second wind. You have to factor in, he's a smaller man, so he's going to be a bit more energy efficient than someone like Tyson Fury. And so both guys were feeling the pace of the fight by this point. But Usyk, once again, being a smaller man, which isn't always a disadvantage, he was able to get that second wind and he started to get the momentum back. And then Tyson Fury had a crisis in round nine. He was he was knocked down by Alexander Usyk. It was kind of in the closing seconds of the round and the ropes held him up. But Tyson Fury was completely drunk. He got hit by a series of punches from Alexander Usyk, which landed clean. And you could see it in Tyson Fury's eyes where this wasn't like where he'd been hit hard before and knocked down and, you know, okay, he's just got to get his bearings his bearings Tyson Fury looked like he was almost being victimized there there was like a look of distress in his eyes which you don't often I don't really recall seeing that in Tyson Fury's eyes even say the the third Wilder fight where he took a a heavy knockdown from a Wilder right hand Fury was lucid you could see it in his eyes that he just he was like okay here we are again Whereas in this one, there all there almost was a look of panic in his eyes, but credit to Fury because he came back and he stuck in there and he showed tremendous heart, tremendous bravery. Um, yeah, and we know that about Tyson Fury. He uh, he does have that bravery. He does have that that warrior spirit in him when he's in the ring, and he needed every bit of it because Alexander Usyk really turned around the momentum and was sticking it on Tyson Fury. And it just goes to show how, maybe this is overly sentimental, but you really do have to take it around at a time because it, there was a point where it was like, okay, Tyson Fury, if he carries on at this pace, he might be able to take Alexander Usyk out. But Alexander Usyk stayed in there. He, uh, he kept chipping away, kept tracking Tyson Fury down, landing those shots, whatever he could land, even if it was slightly cuffing, he'd still throw the shot. And yeah, he stuck it out and eventually got to that round nine, had big success. And it really changed the trajectory of the fight because now both guys are really feeling the pace. They're both taking a lot of punishment. But Alexander Usyk, a bit craftier, a bit more accurate. Maybe the punches were a bit cleaner. And even though Tyson Fury is still landing his own punches, they may be just not as regular. The quality's not quite there. Um... It's not as sharp, not as compact as Alexander Usyk's. And so we see out all 12 rounds, very tight fight. Um, I I think Alexander Usyk was a deserved winner. However, um, it wasn't comfortable like I thought it would be. I've got to hold my hands up. I was wrong in that respect. However, um, yeah, Alexander Usyk wins. I agree with the judge's decision, although I think there was one judge who had it one... 15 to 112. I think maybe that's a little bit of a stretch. These are just my immediate impressions, so I will have to rewatch the fight again. But I think the 114 to 113 um, is probably the most accurate representation of this fight because it really was close, in my opinion. But uh, as I say, going to have to watch this one back, which I'll happily do because it was a really good fight, really entertaining fight. And um, yeah, so Alexander Usyk is undisputed champion what's next of course there's 
been all this talk making me nauseous about a rematch. Tyson Fury initially said in the ring that he does want to exercise that rematch, but that's in the heat of the moment when the adrenaline's still pumping. Um, will he reconsider? Who knows? Because I don't think Tyson Fury can get any better than this. I don't know if Alexander Usyk can get any better than this. I doubt it, but I don't know. We have to see what unfolds. But for now, brilliant fight. Great effort from both guys. I think the right man won. What do you guys think in the comment section below? Maybe we'll re revisit this with some uh, day after thoughts. But for now, I'm going to get this one done, signed off, and head to bed. So thanks for listening, and I'll catch you in the next video.